last talk, it's combining shape changing interfaces and spatial augmented reality enables extended object appearance. And uh, David Lindenbauer from TU Berlin is going to present. Uh, once again, I totally forgot to tell you, but you're supposed to vote for the best talk. So if you have any talk you like, you can vote for as many as you want, and it's on your app. Thank you. OK. Um, hi. Thanks for the introduction. So in our work, we're combining shape-changing interfaces with perspectively corrected 3D graphics, in our case, spatial augmented reality. So we argue that this allows for an extended and enriched object appearance. Shape-changing interfaces in general offer a rich tactile experience. However, their granularity is fairly limited. This means they have a low spatial as well as temporal resolution. Even high-resolution shape-changing interfaces like Inform do not come close to the millions of pixels a regular display provides. Besides granularity, they are also limited in their speed. So first, they are constrained by physical constraints of the actuators, and second, by the constraint that you actually do not want to startle a user when he's touching um, any kind of device. Spatial augmented reality, on the other hand, offers high resolution through projection or as well as through displays. Furthermore, it offers the benefits of that it's able to display an appearance that it's independent of its shape. This means I can basically project anything onto my display surface without having to modify the physical uh, shape of the object. However, obviously, it does not offer any kind of dynamic tangible qualities. If we now look at the combination of the two, or more specifically at the benefits of the two, it quickly becomes apparent that they're actually complementary. So if we combine those two, we think that we get actually the best of both worlds. We provide a conceptual framework for this combination to empower designers and researchers of shape-changing interfaces who want to have their de uh, devices enriched with any kind of 3D co-located graphics. Our framework is inspired by uh, known techniques from computer graphics. Researchers there, for example, added perceived details to, um, to, ge uh, to geometry without making geometry more complex. For example, as you can see here, through normal mapping, where you actually take a 2D image, a low-resolution shape, combine the two, and you get a perceived high-resolution shape. So we have two main ingredients for our concept. One is obviously physical deformation, so we can deform the device on a physical level. Secondly, we have our optical deformation, which means that I can project arbitrary objects onto my, um, onto my device, or I can project moving textures. So these are the main components of our concept. We distilled three, in our framework, three um, distinct concepts which we use. We have bump maps, animated texture maps, and shadow maps. So for bump maps, we combine the physical with the optical deformation. We use shape-changing interfaces for rendering the coarse shape of an object, which is easy to do for them. On the other hand, we use spatial augmented reality for rendering fine details. This allows us for an increased shape uh, resolution without actually increasing mechanical or physical complexity of a device. Here you see one of our examples where we actually project a texture onto the uh, device and also different kind of 3D objects without changing its actual physical shape. Besides bump maps, we also use animated texture maps. So here we use shape-changing interfaces for rendering low-velocity motion. Spatial augmented reality, on the other hand, is, using, uh, is used for rendering high-velocity velo motion, which gives us an increased perceived speed, again, without any additional physical complexity. In the example you see here, we render the low-velocity waves with our shape-changing interface and the high-velocity waves and nice textures with spatial augmented reality. The last of our concepts in this framework are shadow maps for adding virtual depth to an object. So the nice thing here is the shadow no longer depend on the actual physical shape of an object or on the uh, uh, illumination within a room. So we can also render virtual occlusion and illumination 
um, without physical change. Also, we can accentuate physical features. For example, we can make, make edges appear sharper or blur them. In this example you see here, we actually change the shadow which is thrown onto the device without changing anything in the room besides the projection. So these are our three main concepts in our framework. Besides that, we also provide an extension which we call environment maps. It's used for rendering, for example, perceived transparency. However, in contrast to our other concept, this requires either knowledge or control of the environment, which is not available if we would equip our device with, for example, displays, but we can do that since we're using projection mapping. So the combination of dynamic physical and optical shapes allows for an extended object appearance through 3D graphics. Our framework is agnostic of display technology. So we used here projection mapping. However, if we have, would have equipped the devices with the displays, the concept would still be valid. Also, it enab enables features that are challenging to realize, for example, high frequency texture or uh, high velocity motion. Also, it can increase the expressivity of a particular device. And last, uh, lastly, what we can do is we can become, get closer to an accurate rep representation of a desired shape, which is not um, available if we only use shape change. Up to this point, I've only talked how spatial augmented reality can actually benefit shape changing interfaces. However, we also explored what happens if we can actually turn this around and ask ourselves the question, how do shape changing interfaces benefit spatial augmented reality? One of the things we explored is view-dependent shape change. So when you're working with projection mapping or spatial augmented reality, one of the typical problems is cropping. So if I'm tilting a device, the contents, which, are, which would be outside of my display surface, are actually cropped. So the walls here of the game area are cropped. By altering the physical shape of the device based on the viewing angle of the user, we can overcome this problem. So here you can see the few dependent shape change. Um, when the user tilts the device, and you can see in the upper right that the device adapts to, um, to the actual uh, position of the user. So let me briefly walk you through how we actually implemented this. So as I mentioned, we used projection mapping for co-located graphics and OptiCheck for tracking. You might have noticed our three little markers on the device. Our software controls the actuation of the device. Our shape changing tablet is composed of six servo motors for actuation and a flexible top surface 3D printed from NinjaFlex. This is the interior of the device. Um, so we use an Arduino and Bluetooth for wireless communication and battery obviously um, so that we don't have to wire it. This design is inspired by the work of Rasmussen and colleagues who uh, presented their latest paper at TI which was a shape changing phone or they used the shape changing phone. Besides our projection mapping and our shape changing tablet, we also needed a way to match the physical to any virtual target shape. And um, in the paper, we detail our mechanical distance field algorithm. I'll briefly walk you through it. Please refer to the paper for details and a generalization of this algorithm. So for the input, we take a model of our physical device, a virtual model, which features, features all its actuation. And our goal is to match the shape of the device to its virtual input here, the blue box. We had a couple of requirements, one of which is we do not want to have a close correspondence between the physical shape and the input target. You can see that the blue box is fairly different to our shape changing tablet. This should produce a close to optimal fit and it needs to run in real time. Furthermore, we wanted it to work for 3D transformation. So a typical implementation of matching physical and virtual shapes is to use height, um, the height field data to, in order to know uh, how, um, how a device needs to be actuated. However, this only works for two or for basically two dimensions. Yeah. So how we achieve this is we first voxelize our base shape and all its actuation levels um, into a three-dimensional voxel grid. This voxel grid encodes the dimension and states of the device. And with dimension, I mean the actual actuators, and the state is the level of actuation of one particular dimension. So each voxel essentially stores which actuator needs to be actuated how much in order for it to be covered. 
If we now have encoded all the information, all we have to do is matching. So we basically intersect our virtual model with our voxel grid, which has the information which actuator needs to be um, actuated, and um, this, can, um, this allows us for the device to adapt correctly. The nice thing of this algorithm is that a large part of it can actually be pre-computed. So the voxelization and the encoding only needs to be done once, and this can be performed offline. The matching, since it's a basic, essentially it's a simple lookup, can be performed in real time. As I said, we wanted it to be a three-dimensional, it should work for three dimensions, so we also created this hypothetical shape-changing cube which has transformation across three dimensions. By voxelizing it and encoding the information, it also adapts correctly to our virtual uh, input uh, blue box. We created three applications, um, which I want to show you, to showcase the, uh, our concept. The first is a labyrinth game, where, we, where the, actuation or the physical state of, device of the device adapts to one of its game elements, so in this case, the ball. Uh, the other textures are rendered through spatial augmented reality. This allows for a greater gaming experience and more immersion, because the user can actually feel the game while still um, having a high resolution graphics. Secondly, we uh, created a spatial navigation application. The physical uh, state of the device is uh, controlled by a view-dependent shape change algorithm. So users can explore a map or here, for example, the mountains. And lastly, we created an ambient, ambient display application where, which displays the wind and, uh, and weather of our no nice island here. And as soon as the weather gets more rough, the waves are rendered physically through the shape change device so the user can feel it and also the waves and the wind are rendered through spatial augmented reality. So to conclude, we combined dynamic physical interfaces with 3D graphics, and this gives us the best of both worlds, which are rich tangible qualities and high resolution and high speed. We think it's very important if you're designing any kind of device to focus on both the physical as well as the optical appearance. We think that future devices will feature, for example, wraparound OLED displays for an even uh, higher resolution. Our framework is inspired by computer graphics and is display agnostic, so you can use it like we do for, with projection mapping or displays. Our implementation is based on projection mapping, and our mechanical distance fields algorithm um, allows us for, to matching physical to virtual targets. So the last thing I wanted to say is we open sourced our hardware as well as the mechanical distance field algorithm on this address. So please check it out, play with it, uh, and feedback is very welcome. With that, I want to thank you for your attention, and I would be happy to answer your questions. Roll Vertigo, Queen's University. Very nice work. Um, have you, um, I'm assuming you have considered sticking a real display on there. Uh, we actually had one prototype with two displays on it, however, they were not flexible enough. And with the, so I think we are very much, we would have loved to use displays. Um, however, we were very much constrained by the amount they can bend and can deform, and that would have brought us into real problems. We use projection mapping because it allows us to like, easily prototype. However, as I said, I think in the future, you really want this to be displays. Yeah, okay, we, ne we need to talk. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some displays. If you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Any other questions? Are you all ready for coffee? Is that it? Yes, looks like it. Okay, so we have, uh, well, first, thank to our speakers. That was a great session. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we now have a coffee break until 4.30. Thank you.